Quantum torpedoes are an extremely powerful weapon first introduced in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. They are the evolution of the good old photon torpedo and capable of inflicting far more damage. They were used by newer Starfleet ships during the Dominion War and against the Borg at the Battle of Sector 001. This is the most powerful weapon equipped on the Defiant class ships and the Sovereign class, such as the Enterprise E. The Cardassian Union also had these weapons by the time of the Dominion War. Usually a quantum torpedo is rendered as a blue-white ball of undulating light. They impact a target and there seems to be something of a delay before the explosion effect is actually seen. Functionally and tactically, these weapons work very much the same way as photon torpedoes. The only difference is in the warhead itself. A photon torpedo has a warhead packed with matter and antimatter and the annihilation of which releases an explosion of gamma radiation in the form of photons. Such an explosion is capable of far greater yields than nuclear weapons depending on how much antimatter is used. Quantum torpedoes have a different warhead system, which I'll get into in a moment. First of all, the torpedo casings of quantum torpedoes is very much the same as the photon torpedoes. Quantum torpedoes use microfusion engines for propulsion, warp sustainer field generators so that they can be fired at warp speed, and although it's never mentioned, I've always maintained that photon and quantum torpedoes have a short-lived energy field or deflector shield to help with durability, shield mitigation, and hull penetration. And now for the warhead itself. Unlike a photon torpedo, a quantum torpedo uses zero-point energy, which is the field in a vacuum to generate a destructive force. Now I consider myself to be a fairly clever guy, but I sometimes reach the limits of my little mind when studying the actual scientific nature of zero-point energy. I've managed to grasp it a little bit by using the real-world naval torpedoes as an analog. Real torpedoes are actually far more destructive under the water than they would otherwise be. The reason for this is that when they detonate, there's an enormous shock wave created by the water. But there's also a bubble or a cavitation that forms when the torpedo detonates. The shock wave is one form of damage for sure and can break the back of ships with ease. The explosive detonations itself is another form of damage and the third is when the bubble actually collapse which creates a powerful jet of water that shoots upwards and if detonated in the right place this jet of water can shear through ships. This is an analog for the release of zero point energy. So to keep all this in mind and to understand zero-point energy along with many other aspects of quantum theory and M-theory, think of the vacuum of space as not empty but as water, only the water is a zero-point energy state of rest, or a state of equilibrium. To have any kind of measurable effect on the zero-point energy, we have to create a differential, very much like the underwater torpedo does when it detonates. Although our modern science, as of the 21st century, doesn't fully understand zero-point energy in the vacuum, we do know that a state of differential can be created or measured by something called a Kashmir effect. The Kashmir effect is an attracting force, very much like a magnet, and it can be created with two plates. Surely there are other ways to create this effect, perhaps by using some sort of high energy or exotic matter. But here's what I propose. I propose that the quantum torpedo uses a conventional photon torpedo warhead, but the energy release is shaped in a way that creates a huge differential or Kashmir effect. This differential causes a collapse back onto itself and releases a huge amount of destructive energy very much the same way a marine torpedo does by creating a collapsing bubble in the water. Only in space, the water is the vacuum energy of space itself. Perhaps larger yield quantum torpedoes could even create something like a small singularity or a short-lived black hole. Now if any of you understand quantum physics better than I do, especially zero-point energy or the Kashmir effect, by all means chime in on the comments. We often teach each other a lot in the comments, so I welcome any corrections or debates um, or any education you might be able to offer. But in conclusion, I'll say that quantum torpedoes have the potential to be the strongest weapons for the sheer destructive power in Star Trek, if they are allowed to hit an unshielded hull. Well, that's all I have for quantum torpedoes. Thanks for watching, Space Friends. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, share, and consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash resurrected. Until next time. Dreamer, dreamer
time slows down.